I always felt you and I could have been friends. <laughs> I see you at things and we and we have a chat, but this is probably going to be the longest conversation we've ever had. I think you're right. I think in, you, you know, know you know when like... you paused then, I thought for a minute, I thought you know, but don't you remember Rob, we went out for dinner that time. I, I thought the pause might kind of suggest thoughtfulness and sincerity. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with you. We could have been friends. Well, I think what might have been, you know, <laughs> because we have in common a love for a person and he's there on your chest from the 68 special. Yeah, the Elvis thing. When did you first get into Elvis? I think when I was about three, three or four years old. Wow. And it was hearing his voice, actually. And, uh, you know, and as a kid, I guess as a three or four year old, you know, songs like Teddy Bear are the ones that you kind of like are drawn to because, you know, there's, it, it's a part of your world. Yeah. At that point. yeah. And uh, he's, ta he's talking about the subjects that matter to you. Yes, I got stung. I mean, you know, <laughs> I did. I got stung. I understand this. Frank Skinner famously bought a shirt that he hoped <laughs> was worn by Elvis. Have you deployed your vast wealth that you've collected through your career? Have you bought any Elvis stuff? Um, no. <laughs> I used my vast wealth to feed the hungry. You uh, have one give... child. Now, come on, you can't make out like you're, you're, you're being... Or, or are you talking about your general charitable work? No, no, I mean, that one child eats a lot. <laughs> I don't have anything that he owned. I, I, I used to think I'd like to, and it's always coming up in auction, whether it's a ring or sunglasses or shirts. But you'd, you'd never be sure, would you? No, it's like socks, isn't it? I mean, the thing is that, you know, someone could say these are Elvis's socks. And I don't know how, you know, how long you would go with it before you began, began to doubt yourself. Can I offer up to you Ronnie Tut's drumsticks? Well, that's amazing. This is playing with Neil Diamond. Mm. I did a show with Neil Diamond and Ronnie was on the drums and I think he knew because I'd asked him about Elvis and stuff, you know. And as he came, came off the stage at the London Palladium, having played Sweet Caroline with these and Crackling Rosie, and as he walked past me, he gave them to me. That's amazing. A month later, I got an invoice from him. <laughs> which I wasn't expecting. And for me, it kind of took some of the edge off it. <laughs> I, I, I can go back to lots of relationships that have a very similar end. Uh, <laughs> I met Ronnie Tut last year. You met him last year? I met him and James Burton ah. and Ben Hardin. I mean, amazing just to be around. See, this goes back to the kind of, you know, the, the young teen selves of ours. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of go, I, it's, you know, if I don't get a job, if I audition for something, I didn't get it. I kind of go, do you know what? I met, you know, I've met Priscilla, you know, a few times and had a drink with her. I had a martini with Priscilla, I remember ex the exact drinks. But for me, my perfect moment was being at this gig, and there were only about 20 people there. And some of the Rolling Stones were there, Frank Skinner was there. We were watching Scotty Moore and DJ Fontana play music, play drums, and there were people who were getting up, so Ronnie Wood got up and played with them, and uh, Gary Bonds got up and played with them. And one of the organizers came up to me and said, this is incredible, isn't it? And I said, yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, they've just played Hound Dog. I mean, these are the guys that played it. And she said, do you, um, do you want to get up and sing with them? <laughs> I said, no, but being asked was a perfect moment.